Hi, everybody, and welcome to another Off the Charts. Uh, investors, we certainly know it is a tough market out there, no question about it. But that is why we need to find the companies that have that huge multi-bagger type of potential upside to really help offset the risk that's in the market right now. And the way that we do that is to find those companies in a very early stage with extremely compelling projects and also near-term news catalysts that will carry the day if they are successful. And that's what we think we have on offer today with Arvind Misra, Managing Director of Bella Rare Rocks, because Bella Rare Rocks has those characteristics I just mentioned before. It has that potential to really be a multi-bagger. It has near-term catalysts, and it's also, importantly, in the commodities that are still in structural demand. And with that introduction, Arvind, welcome. Thank you, Greg, and I'm really pleased to be on your platform talking to you today. Great, great. Hey, Arvind, people back people as much as the projects, and Bella Rare Rocks is a geologist-led company. Can you just talk to us a little bit about your background for a moment? Well, look, we have a lot of geologists. I am myself not a geologist, Greg. I'm a right. mining engineer by trade, but I have been in the industry for uh, uh, quite a bit of time. I came to Australia in 1988 uh, when Rio Tinto brought me out, worked in their underground coal mines. Then I did some time at Mount Aja Mines where I was doing a lead and zinc mine over there. And then I did a couple of years of a, a very large copper mine in Zambia for an Anglo-American. And then I led a company in an IPO in 2007 where I established a brand new copper mine in India for established for 10 years. So my background is a mix of a lot of base metal work and bulk commodity. Uh, but in terms of geology, I'm very blessed with having a very star cast board. That's and, right. Uh, and the leading geologist that I have on my board is a very renowned lady, Michelle Stokes, 35 years of experience. And uh, her husband, Dr. Greg Partington, who is our chief technical advisor, and also they are the largest shareholder of the business because they brought the main project to us. Between them, they have 70 years of experience, several findings which they have taken from grassroots all the way to ASX listing successfully. So I have got very good geologists. In addition to that, I employ a very good exploration manager, Chris Blazer, who is predominantly site-based. So plenty of geology experience in my team. Yep, exactly. And then, you know, looking more towards Bellararox, the company itself, maybe just give a, an overview. And obviously, the, you know, Bellara, the project is the major focus. Yeah, well, uh, Gary, correct, Greg. Bellara is our flagship project, which is in New South Wales. And uh, it's about a three hour drive from Sydney to us west. And it's now Lachlan Ford built, not as an elephant country with a lot of other large mining companies producing uh, base metals like we are trying to produce or explore. And that project actually was owned previously by another listed company called Iron Bark. And before then, it was listed by several other companies. And in the past, also, there was a couple of small mines pre-World War time, which were mining very high-grade copper, 3 to 5% copper, 2 to 4.5 grams per ton gold, and 2 to 3 uh, ounces of silver per ton. It's very high-grade that time. So uh, previous owners drilled all together about 27 holes and produced a joke resource, which only was up to 2004 standard. So the, and I will talk a bit more as we go into the presentation, but uh, we are a bit more advanced than normal exploration company at the IPO. We, we had the resource already, which we are trying to reconfirm and upgrade to the new standard, and which is very imminent. By end of this month, I will have my maiden resource published. Okay, so wait, so just to, I hear you, it just dropped out a bit there, but to confirm, you're gonna have a maiden resource you think within the next 30 days. Arvind, it seems to be dropping out. Hold on. I'm trying to see. Hang on, everybody. I'm just trying to see if the internet connection is on my side or Arvind's side. We are having terror. Arvind, can you hear me okay? I can hear you fine. Yes. Okay. Sorry about that. I think that we're having a, uh, we're in the middle of an, a huge torrential weather storm here in Melbourne. And I think that it's knocking out my internet. Um, 
But just to confirm, I, my question was, so you expect to have a maiden resource within the next 30 days or so? We are working towards publishing a resource by the end of this month. Yes. Okay, okay. Um, hang on a second, sorry. I'm just having, again, a slightly technical issue here or there. Um, you have been drilling though, you already have done quite a bit of drilling up there. And the market did get excited, you know, in, in you know by last month's results. Can you just talk to us a little bit about them and what you learned from those results? Well, we yes, we finished about thirty-eight holes for five thousand five thousand seven hundred meters of drilling, and which is RC and diamond drilling. And these holes were drilled mainly to confirm the old resource model and some extension of that. And each of those holes, multiple of those holes, have intersected massive sulfide. And multiple of those holes have come out with wider and better grade than what was in the historical model. So the drilling has been quite successful. And uh, despite the fact that we had significant rain interruptions and some COVID interruption, we still managed to get our drilling done on time. And we are all looking forward to now publishing resource based upon the results that we have received so far. Right. And then as far as, okay, so the next we're going to have that resource. And as far as the drilling campaign, what do the next 12 months look like? Our next 12 months is just extension of the same drilling. Maybe just for your uh, uh, audience, can I just throw some of the pictures? Might be easier to explain. For sure. If you don't, if you don't mind. So I'll just click to the slide where it describes where you will next 12 months be assigned. So if you look at this screen on the right hand side, this is a prospectivity modeling result. So basically what geologists do is that they take all the data, which is your soil sampling, your right. geophysics work, your IP, and uh, gravity survey and magnetics, which we have done plenty of in the last six months. And then they provide data evidence to each of those. And then my, the computer runs through an algorithm and comes up and then shows you where the prospectivity rankings are. So right. you can see on this one, uh, the yellow colors are the pros most prospective. And, uh, and, and which is confirmed by the drilling in the Bellara region, where my cursor is right now, Bellara mine, you can see it's very prospective. Right. And the native bee mine on the southern side. But what's more interesting to look at there is that if you look at further south of the, where the last drilling hole is with the black star there, there's not a single hole has been drilled. All the holes are about one and a half kilometers for the south. And also, uh, interestingly, where, where my cursor is now, the red dot is just about there was the old historical mine, which was mined for very high grade. Interestingly, there's been no hole drills around that high grade mine that was mined in the past. So we have this one and a half kilometers of uh, this strike length that we would be priority as a priority targeting in our next round of drilling. Right. Which, which we are looking at commencing sometime next month. We are in the process of getting approval. And, and sorting out our contractors and suppliers to start coming to drilling for the second half of next month at this stage. And in addition to that, you can see there are some other targets which are in the in the more of a brown color. And it, it, they're not, um, in our opinion, less priority than anything else. So that yellow colors, it basically because there's not much work that has been done, that's why they are. But you can see there's a parallel structure looks like running. If I, in the north south of Bellora, Nativity, and then there are parallel structures on east and west side that we still have to test. And most exciting part, it, it, so you ask me for 12 months, I'll be more than busy for 12 months just trying to figure it out if there are five kilometers of the work that we have done so far. But right. we have beyond that, we have 25 kilometers of strike land within our lake. And so in those remaining 20 kilometers, there has been no work done. So we've got a lot of exciting work to be doing just on this project alone. Great. Hey, you know, to, just to, no pun intended, but to drill in a little bit more, on the six holes that are up, up, upcoming on, on the one and a half kilometers, and bear in mind that a lot of people are not engineers or geologists that are on this call. Um, how do you ensure that you are getting the best possible locations? Because, you know, one and a half kilometers is still quite a bit of distance, really to, to drill those holes. Look, these uh, holes have been planned and, uh, uh, with a lot of scientific work going behind it. So basically, we've done the gravity survey ourselves, which uh, which looks at the characteristic of rock further down 300, 400 meters from the surface. We have done a gradient array IP, which looks at the different characteristics with the chargeability of the rocks. 
and then has magnetics work done. And recently we have done some fixed loop work, electromagnetic and some downhole EM survey. And the combination of all that work, the geophysicist will analyze and tell us the quality of the rock that we have and how well that matches with the Bilara rocks where we have found massive sulfide intersections. And right. then and that's what that's how we optimize the location of the drill hole to make sure that we have very confident that we will drill some will drill and get something there. Right. I understand. So and, and this is obviously on top of the maiden resource. Correct. Well, well just on that picture alone, the maiden resource is just around where my cursory, just where the pillar need to be, where basically the yellow part on the top and the small yellow part in the middle, that's how much resources uh, that we'll be announcing. That's where the drilling has been done in the phase one. Right. So it, it obviously, you know, an incredibly exciting time there. And also, can you just, Arvin, go through the, co the commodities? Because maybe for some people that are not as familiar with the company, uh, obviously there's copper, but just what are the co the all the commodities that you're looking for? We are basically uh, a company that we call ourselves a battery mineral company, which is copper and zinc. And our project happens to have the lead and silver and gold associated with that. So it's a polymetallic deposit. But the main focus is zinc and copper. Uh, about 50% of the value of our rock is in the zinc. About 25-30% value of the rock is in copper. And the precious and the lead is remaining 20-25%. Got it. And for people that don't know, there's not that many zinc companies on the ASX. And you know, and speaking of the ASX, um, and always we have to be careful. We don't like to compare ourselves to other people, but everyone compares themselves to other people. Uh, when you look at other companies in your universe, when you think about your market cap versus what you potentially have, who are the best comparisons that investors should look for? Look, I have a slide to show you on that, and maybe I can explain that. I Perfect. That's what I was leading towards. Exactly. Yeah. I, I hired a uh, independent consultant to do uh, to guide me as to how I compare myself with yes uh, really comparable companies. So uh, just let me just explain this graph how it works. On the y-axis, you have a joke resource in terms of millions of tons of the ore or the rock. And that people and we have, or we will be announcing potentially modeling and other companies. And the, and, and the x axis is the in situ value of that rock multiplied by uh, the value per ton of the metal price, right? So let's say you got 10 million ton, you got 1%, and then you do work that out how many tons of the zinc that would be or whatever metal, and then multiply by the LME price is the current metal price. So that gives you the in situ value of the rock. Right. So it takes it takes advantage of the grade then. Okay. It takes yeah. into account, so I should say. And the grade, uh, in terms of the rock and the grade of the rock multiplied by the LME price or the benchmark price. So that's the in situ value of the rock. Understood. So, uh, and, and the size of the bubble is the market cap in, 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 in terms of. So if you look at the very bottom first bubble, that's BRX market cap at 2.55 million ton which is the resource which was announced by the iron bark or the previous owners. That's not the resource, which my, my resource will come out end of the month. So in uh, my last few months of average market cap has been about 25 million. So hypothetically, if I come out with, let's say 5 million ton, then proportionately market cap would be around 50. And if I come out with 10 in future, it would be 100. Then I looked at, and rather than modeling, academic exercise, I looked at the practical examples in the peel mining and DVP. They are very similar company to us. And they have projects in New South Wales, similar project to us. They are both explorers. And uh, if you look at the peel mining, it's at about 15 million ton. Their total metal value would be 6 billion on the, on the x-axis. And the market caps is about 112. So that aligns very nicely with, with the trajectory that we are on. And then Correct. if you look at the bigger player and uh, DVP developed, which has got 35 million ton, 18 billion mark, and market cap sits about 400 million, something like that. And, uh, and in terms of DVP, they are uh, looking at developing the project that they have acquired in the local and fold belt where we are in the Woodlawn project. So, so they are pretty sort of comparable. And obviously they are a bit more ahead in the journey than we are. We've been we less than a year company and they, some of them have been for years or there. So the trajectory that we are on will be there. And I'd like to make a comment on what my shareholder can expect, uh, what we 
may announce in a couple of weeks' time. I just want to give you guys only some indications. Yeah, that'd be so great. Greg, uh, Greg I, I'll take you to the slide just uh, uh, just a few slides back and to make my point, if you don't mind. That would be great. Uh, so this is a, a long section of the old model, the pink color that you see where my cursor is going is where the old resource modeling was done. And, and the faint black color ones are the old holes drilled by the previous owners, as you can see, scattered all over the model. And the red dots are the dots that we have drilled and we have received results. So basically on surface, it runs about 700 meters and in a depth about 350. That's the envelope we are looking at in terms of the, in terms of the size of the, of the resource model. So that model was uh, to, uh, the 2.55 million tons that uh, are, are quoted was based upon 27 of those holes drilled, that are historical holes. Then we are adding about 33 new holes into the model and, and major, multiple of those holes are wider in the intersection, high grade. And so a density of the hole has gone higher for the same area. And it looks like it's wider. And more importantly, another point to note is when Iron Bark did the modeling, they used a cutoff of about 2% zinc because the zinc prices were not as good as we are today. So, like right. they were having maybe 2,000 or plus minus something. And in, in the last three months, if you look, the zinc prices have been between 3 to 3,500. So, our modeling will be, can be done on a lower cutoff because the zinc prices are higher. So if we do the, uh, so if you lower the cutoff to 1%, even the old model will give you a little bit extra tans, right? Then right. I have added 27 holes into it. So I'm, I'm really excited about uh, what I'm going to what, what expect that, that come out. And I don't have numbers yet. I've got SRK as my competent person that are doing the work and, and, and they, they will probably give me a report sometime next week before I, and then that's when I'll be able to announce it. Right. That's great, Arvin. And obviously, investors, that means that there is something that in a market where it feels like it's so macro driven, there is something stock specific here that we can look for. Correct. So, so major resource within nine months in the, in this major resource will end up in the valuation and hopefully I'll be related uh, to reflect the resource that I'll be, I'll be announcing. Great, fantastic. And also, can you just talk a little bit about zinc and the overall market, especially in Australia? Uh, you know, we, we know that there's a lot of zinc production over in the, um, the Northern Hemisphere, but what are, you, what, is, what are the competitors and what is the zinc market like here in Australia? Yeah, that's a great question. Can I answer them? In, in, and I'll just make a point before I come to the answer this question. I just come out from a conference I attended in Singapore one-to-one -one conference. It's a very well-respected conference, a lot of experts. And yes. I attended a couple of sessions as to what the mining world will look like. And one of the very good statistics was quoted in there was that the decarbonization of world, which everybody is now working on, would require about $40 trillion worth of investments, 40 trillion. And 10, 10 trillion of that is a mineral space, 10 trillion. <laughs> So, uh, and, and a couple of uh, products and main products that we are generating, zinc and copper, they are all going to battery zinc, particularly in the long-term storage. And the copper obviously goes into the lot of battery and also the technology material. So the, the, the fundamentals of these commodities are looking very, very strong. Zinc has been put on a US <clears throat> critical mineral list this year. And, uh, and zinc is one of those commodities where you find there's not been too many new uh, findings that will come under the production streams in a hurry. So there's a lot of zinc depletion happening, but there's not a lot of too many new projects coming out. So zinc itself is well-placed in, in future. Right. And in, also, as I mentioned, in Australia, there really is not a whole lot of zinc, is there? No, At this point, I mean, anyway. Correct. Uh, we are not the largest zinc producer in the world. Uh, uh, there are some good mines like Montage and places like that, Century Zinc, they're doing some. But in terms of massive zinc production, no, we're not the top most. Yeah. Right. Arvin, you know, just switching over to the corporate side for a second, you're a new company on the ASX. Can you just talk to us a little bit about that process? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, can I just uh, show a screen again here? 
this is my uh, new company, very tightly held register. Uh, okay. uh, what, we only have 54 million shares on each of these. Uh, this includes the 7 million shares I placed last, last week at 55 cents. Uh, and options on each of 37.3 million, which are all BRS4 options, which are loyalty options. They are tradable on the stock exchange. They're trading, I think, around 8 cents. Right. There are cash. Uh, we well, we got plenty of cash now to take care of the sales for next world. Uh, and uh, in terms of my uh, top 20 shareholders, they own about 57%. It's pretty tightly held. Right. And uh, I've got a lot of large shareholders and really good support from some of the key brokers that very uh, follow us very keenly. They yes. can accord and uh, in loss partners and CPS and people like them. They're very supportive of what we're trying to achieve. Right. In terms of my team, uh, if I can just throw a very quick uh, introduction, Neil Warburton is my chairman in play, uh, a legendary uh, mining entrepreneur and mining professional. He's on the board of many, many companies. He was uh, MD of uh, Barminko for a long time and also on the board for IVO for a long time. And uh, Michelle Stokes, I spoke to her there, uh, I spoke about her. Yes. Simon Robertson is our uh, expert uh, finance guru, a total accountant, and ASX compliance person. And John is a legal person and also the company secretary. Uh, and more importantly, is Greg. Greg is the be uh, brain behind my explosion program. He's a really experienced campaigner. He has done uh, many, many great findings, including below bullying 3 million ounces uh, and uh, Tempia, which rages and the Duke exploration, there's named few. And right. he, him and his wife is the one who found the solar opera and we went into the project into the ICO. And Chris is our exposition manager. And he he's the guy who's running the operational side based in Maji itself, Monday to Friday. He's out of Sydney, does a commute. So very good team. Yeah, <laughs> fantastic. Well, Arvid, you know, it's certainly very, very exciting times. As I said, you're a new company and more importantly, you're doing activities and you're doing a lot of, a lot of work. Um, everybody, I may, before I open it up to Q&A, Arvind, if there are one or two points that you want people to leave today to know about Bellar Arox, what would they be? Uh, uh, I will have, I have a good slide for that. Just key point for the investors, uh, yes. this, this slide here. And uh, I won't read everything, but I'll just make the key points. Key points is that we are a very really advanced mineral explorer. We're in the right commodity that will need battery minerals and technology space. We are uh, not a early start ground sniffing exploration company. We are well advanced. We got this project. We already had a resource. We are reconfirming. We'll have a resource in a couple of weeks time. And the resource that we are developing is around a historically very high grade mine that was mine in the past. And, uh, and uh, if you look at the parameters that were used in developing the previous resource model to the new reality of higher metal prices, we remain excited about what's coming out in the resource in a couple of weeks time. And the drilling has been very successful and uh, stage two drilling that we are gonna start. So the project, uh, uh, if I can describe that, it has got a mining scale geology, which is current resource model that we are producing, which can extend along a strike and at depth. Then beyond that, uh, south of Nitibi that I showed you, that one and a half kilometers, it looks exactly like Bellara in terms of geophysics and geology characteristics. So we can build our resource model further beyond uh, the resource and uh, currently defined boundaries of resource model. And then we have got 20 kilometers more further down, but there's been no work done. Right. So all in all, we are well-funded and we are tightly held, well-funded and tightly held. Yeah, exactly. So no balance sheet risk there. Um, okay, everyone, you know, feel free to A, raise your hand and to just ask a question, out, you know, right onto the screen there, or B, if you're a little shy, you can WhatsApp it to me and I totally understand that. I mean, somebody already is asking me a question about the, dr about the drilling. Uh, they're asking, um, you're going 350 meters deep. Would you consider going deeper first or are you expecting to go longer on strike first? Uh, the holes that we are planning, some of them would go deeper to test out the plunge, particularly on the Northern side of our resource model on the Bellara side, because the old holes that drilled were quite thick and good zinc grade. So we are 
we think that it plunge is going to continue down south. So we will be drilling some hole deeper. Right. And, and uh, but the focus would be drilling along the strike for the south of Native B, that one and a half kilometers that we have found uh, is very prospective. Right. And it, it, can you just go into a little bit more detail about why go uh, along further? Along further, just to get my inferred resource up. I want to get my inferred resource up along the strike and get my explosion target established uh, multiple times of the resource that we're going to publish. So at the moment, like, Resource model is testing 700 meters of strike length. Right. With that, with that, the south of Native Beach, one and a half kilometer strike length. So it, it, it's going to increase my, hopefully, it's an explosion target several times the resource that we're going to publish. Got it. Okay. Arvin, another question someone's asking me is uh, Have any of the major companies come to you yet to, do, to talk about a joint venture? Oh, no, no, not many as yet, okay. uh, but I know when to go to them or when they will come to me. I think once we announce this resource and, and hopefully with the target we're doing next drilling, we can establish, I mean, uh, talking to some of the brokers and, and the analysts, some of them, right. and they, they think that if you have 15 to 20 million ton defined, that's when everybody starts to think seriously that you will have a uh, a long-term commercial operation. And uh, even 5 million tons, some people will do the operation, but I don't want to rush anything, contemplate that as yet. I want to sort of build a critical mass, which will be respectable. So that would be the time that, yeah, I'm sure we will be approached so we can approach company at the time. Got it. Uh, are, someone else asked me, are there any other locations nearby that you would consider acquiring? Uh, that definitely is on the radar and part of our strategy is to, uh, within 100 to 200 kilometers where we are, uh, to scan some of the projects which we do from time to time, the projects get offered. We have been a very successful IPO of the year, as you know, right. and uh, we are well funded. So there's a lot of uh, owners of the projects, they approach us from time to time. So uh, our criteria is that if, if they are similar commodity within the region, uh, we will look at them at the right price, at the right time. So yes, and we are always looking. Right. Um, someone else is asking, how do you differentiate between zinc and copper drilling what you're looking for? I know it's a random question, but I have to ask it. <laughs> they both come as part of the massive sulfide. So right. yeah, and, uh, one in the geophysics, uh, one of them responds to certain things, other than doesn't, so we can differentiate that way. But the drilling is, is part of the same massive sulfide. We get together, lead and zinc. Got it. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was going to say I, I, that's the, the perfect tagline here is that they come in, in the same package there. Um, Arvind, someone else has asked me, were you strategically seeking, it looks like you're fully funded. Is that part of your strategy so that you won't need to raise capital for the foreseeable future? We are an exploration company, so we always raise money from time to time. So idea is not to raise too much. Idea is to raise a small amount of money that I need to do my next stage of work, prove it up, get my share price up, hopefully, if the market is right and the results are good. And then we do the next lot of work with the next lot of working. But in terms of uh, my own planning, uh, I don't think I'll be raising too much money after maybe one more rise sometime next year. I'm not sure at what time, I don't, I can't plan, but I have a lot of BRXO options which are expiring in June 24th. They're 95 cents option. They're a little bit further away from where currency of price is, but we were trading at $1.53. Right. So right. If, if the market responds the way it responded to us early and the, and, the, and the market gets better, I mean, uh, when the market was good, we were $1.50 inflation, interest rate, and the war in, in, in Europe has, has brought everybody down, including us. So in the right market, if those BRXO options are in money and hopefully people will exercise the options, I'll have plenty of money in 24. So uh, I'll be very, very well funded at that time. So bridging myself between the money I have got now till June 24, uh, I might have to do small raising, but I can't predict that right now. It all depends as to market conditions and the results that I come out with in the next six months. Got it. Okay, everybody, we, we have to keep it short, unfortunately, Arvind, um, and we're, we're just wrapping up here around 1230 Eastern time now. Um, everybody, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, Arvind, 
uh, I can hear it in your voice, your excitement. Um, we absolutely love the story. We like the fact that you're actually getting out there doing work in the commodities that people are focused on. Uh, the share registry, it does look very tight, well-funded, very thoughtful. Uh, anybody, if you have any further questions that come up after the fact, just let us know. We'll make sure to get them over to Arvind. Arvind, thank you so much for your time. Great. I'm grateful for the opportunity to talk to you and your support base. And I look forward to doing another one. If Whenever you invite me, I'll be there. Absolutely. And especially after this major resource comes out and the share price is a lot higher, for sure. Thanks for watching another episode of 180 Markets Off the Charts. If you want access to thousands of capital raises, sign up at 180markets.com.au and you'll get access to our very next capital raise. Thanks for watching.